The title of this morning's message is, Didn't You Notice? Didn't you see he was injured? There's something that happens to a person when he or she visits Walter Reed Memorial Hospital. I never served in the armed forces. That was not the calling that God put on my life. And, and I'm very thankful for those who did respond to that call. And one does not need to serve in the military, the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force, to gain and to have an incredible appreciation for the wounded and for those who have been injured in battle. And Colonel Oliver North told the story of a U.S. Navy corpsman who was a very large, strong, and tough man. He was about six foot four in height, and he, he probably weighs about 230 pounds and built like a machine. He loved being a Marine, and, and so at some point in time, he chose to be a Navy corpsman because he wanted to serve, but he really wanted to save lives. He wanted to save people, and so he decided to be a Navy corpsman, and it was April 6th of 2003, and the Navy corpsman, he was rushing out onto the battlefield to save multiple Marines, and he did. He, he would pick them up and put them over his shoulder, and he would carry them back to safety, and he would leave the minimal safety of the military vehicles and helicopters, and he would run out onto the battlefields to go and to save the lives of more and more soldiers. And he goes back onto that battlefield time and time again. And he gets another person and another person. He gets another soldier and another soldier, throwing them over his shoulders as he would carry them back to the relative safety of the military vehicles. And he goes out to get the last of the casualties from this gunfight. And as he is carrying this wounded soldier back to the helicopter, there is a Reuters news crew standing by. And they were attempting to document everything. They were attempting to take pictures and film the scene. They were attempting to, to talk to people and, and get a first, uh, first line glimpse of what was going on. And, and I want you to look closely at this picture that I have here for you today. I want you to notice that the man who was being carried is not a wounded Marine. The man who was on that Marine's shoulders is a wounded Iraqi Republican guardsman. The wounded soldier is not a Marine. He's not one of ours. He's not even a U.S. citizen. And so one of the Reuters news crew members, he shouted at the Marine. He said, why did you do that? Didn't you notice? Didn't you notice he's not a Marine? Didn't you notice he is an Iraqi? And the Marine responded back to that news crew member, and he said, didn't you notice he was wounded? And that's who we are, and that's what we do. Didn't you notice he was wounded? And the prophet Isaiah penned those simultaneously dreadful and yet beautiful words when he said, but he was wounded. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for you, and he was wounded for me. And I want you to understand that we have not a high preach which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So today I ask that question. Didn't you notice that he was wounded? Didn't you notice he has felt everything that you have felt? You can cry out from the belly of hell, and God will hear you. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you're going through. God can and God will respond. He will hear you. And, and the psalmist, David, he sang these words. He says, whither shall I go from thy spirit, and whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold... Thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there thy hand shall guide me and lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. I want you to understand this morning that it doesn't matter where you are or what you're going through. Didn't you notice that he was wounded for your transgressions? He was bruised for your iniquities, and he has felt everything that you have felt. It was another battlefield. It was another place in time. But Jesus looked out from his battlefield there 2,000 years ago onto your battlefield. And he saw you. He saw you there. And he took your place. And the only way that's possible is because we serve an everlasting God. And time doesn't contain him. 
And so 2,000 years ago, as that flesh was hanging there on the cross, he was going and fighting on your battlefield. He was wounded for you. And there is no experience that you have had in life where you cannot say we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. There is no experience in your life where you can say nobody understands what I'm going through. There is no experience in your life where you can say that there is no one who can comprehend the things I'm dealing with. And, and, and I want you to understand, yes, there is. He was wounded specifically for you. And if you were the only one who needed it, he would have gone to Calvary. So when that U.S. Navy corpsman ran back out on the battlefield, he was not looking for Americans. When that U.S. Navy corpsman ran back out on the battlefield, he, he was not looking for his friends. He was not looking for his kind. He was not looking for the ones who looked like him. When, when he ran out onto the battlefield, he wasn't looking for the ones he thought might be wealthy or the ones that he thought, well, when their service is over, they're going to be great scientists or great doctors. He didn't look for the ones he thought had the most potential. When he, when he ran out there, he wasn't looking for just the right people. No. When that man ran onto the battlefield, he was looking, seeking, and trying to find any person who was wounded. It didn't matter what uniform they had on. It didn't matter what their future life potential was. It didn't matter how young or old they were. It did not matter what color their skin was. It did not matter from where they came. All that mattered to that soldier on that day is if they're wounded, I'm going to pick them up and I'm going to carry them out of here. And he picked up that Iraqi soldier. And when those who were not soldiers, those new news crews could not understand all that mattered to that man on that day was he was wounded. And our Savior, he was wounded on a cross at Calvary. And with his stripes, you and I are healed. They ripped his flesh. They beat him. They beat him for you. They beat him for me. And the son of righteousness has arisen with healing in his wings. By his stripes, we are healed. And so whatever you face, I want you to understand that he can heal you. He came to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. Right. Yes. Yes, Your heart's broken. God can heal it. He came to deliver the captives. There's no chain that can hold you. It doesn't matter what chain is around you. If it's the addiction to alcohol or the addiction to drugs, addiction to pornography, uh, depression, oppression, anxiety, it does not matter what it is. If you are bound by chains, he came to set you free. And he came to give sight to the blind. And by all means, I believe that he gives sight to the physically, physically blind, as we know from personal experience with Anna's healing. But I also believe a whole lot of this right here, when he says give sight to the blind, I really believe a whole lot of this is revelation of his word. Helping people to see who he is. Wounded for our transgressions. Helping people to see who he is. The Savior on the cross at Calvary. The very same God who created everything and sustains everything was also the sacrifice and the Savior. And so he's also the one who spoke to the waters and the winds. But they already knew his voice because he created them and spoke them into existence. That's the very same God. And he wants you to see this powerful and amazing God, the lion and the lamb, the wheel in the middle of the wheel, the bright and morning star, the ancient of days, but also the one who was wounded specifically for you. And there's nothing in this world that can overcome the wounds of Jesus Christ. So today I ask you, didn't you notice he was wounded for you? Didn't you notice he was wounded for me? Didn't, didn't you notice? Go with me to Matthew. I want you to see the woman with the issue of blood. She wanted to be healed. She wanted to be healed. And in the Bible, Isaiah told us that he was wounded for us, 
and by his stripes we are healed. But he had yet to go to Calvary when she was standing there. But because time is not a constraint on God, he was there and she was there. And he was already the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And so we have this lady trying everything she can, trying everything she knows. And the singular reason why she came to that place that day was total desperation. The, the singular reason why she arrived in this location on this day was complete and utter desperation. She had tried medicine. She had tried a, a, a therapy. She had, she had spent all the money that she had. She'd gone to everyone that she knew to go to. She was desperate. She did everything she knew to do. And so she's so desperate for a healing that she says something that's totally strange and weird and odd. And we read this so much that it doesn't come across to us as, as weird. But she said, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. I, I want you to understand me today. If no one had done that before and you went and told your neighbor, I'm just going to make sure that when he walks by, I'm able to reach out and touch the threads on the bottom of his clothing. They would have been like, what? No. You need to go speak to him. You need to go address him. You need to get in front of him. He needs to talk to you. And, and, and she tells her neighbor, if I can just but touch the, the, the hem on the bottom of his garment, I will be healed. We get too comfortable with this kind of stuff, and we don't realize how powerful it is because it becomes normal to us. But that's not normal. And we know very little about this lady other than the fact that she had a crazy amount of faith. She had an abnormal amount of faith. We know very little about her other than her desperation in life led her to have an amazing amount of faith. She had faith that even the simplest touch of the outer threads of a worn out garment, torn and dirty, would be just enough to heal her of her disease. And when that Marine came back off that battlefield, when that Navy corpsman carried that Iraqi off the battlefield. Brother Davis, he had no idea whether or not that Marine or that Iraqi would live or die. He didn't know. He had no idea what would happen to him. All he saw was there's a chance. He, he, he didn't see color. He just saw a chance of a life living. He didn't see a nationality. He just saw a chance of a life living. He didn't see age. He just saw a chance of a life living. He didn't see wealth and prosperity. He just saw there's a chance that this person might make it. And so he picked him up and he carried him off the battlefield. And everyone else is staring at him thinking, what are you doing? But all he is, he is thinking is, didn't you see he's wounded? And so he risked his own life and he picked up that wounded body and he carried the soldier. He carried the soldier to someone who could help. him. And so Jesus said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And this certain man fell among thieves on his journey. These thieves stripped him of his garment. And these thieves wounded him. These thieves wounded him and they departed and they left him. Hanging on to life, half dead. And by chance, there came down a, a certain priest, a religious man, a lofty man, an educated man. He's walking down that way, and when he saw him wounded, he went to the other side of the road. He went as far away as he possibly could. He saw him wounded and kept his distance. And likewise, a Levite, a man of the tribe of Levi, a special tribe set apart by God to do his holy work. And when he came to that same place on his journey, he came and the Bible says he looked on him. He looked on him and saw him wounded. And then he made a cognitive, conscious decision to pass by on the other side. And we know the story well, and we know that a certain Samaritan, someone who was not from the right family, 
someone who was not from the right town, someone who was not from the right status in wealth or class of society, someone who might not have even been the right color or race or culture. A certain Samaritan journeyed and came to where this wounded man was. And the Bible says when he saw him, he had compassion on him. He saw the wounds, and the sight of the wounds changed him. And the Bible says he went and he bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. You need to understand, the Samaritan was nobody special. The Samaritan didn't have a name. He didn't have a pedigree. He didn't have an education. The Samaritan was from the wrong country. He was from the wrong town. He was from the wrong family. But what the Samaritan saw was he was wounded. That's what the Samaritan saw, wounds. And Jesus said this. He said, when you have done it unto the least of these. When you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. Yesterday at men's breakfast, I got a confirmation in my heart about this message today. I'd already written this message, and this kind of conversation came up. And we started talking about things like this. You see, there's something about seeing the wounds that changes you. There's something about seeing the wounds on somebody that changes you, that causes you to have compassion and empathy. And when you see a beggar on the street, you need to see that person as a wounded person. You don't need to, to look at him and say, is he or she lazy? Is he or she worthless? No, you need to look and see that person as a wounded person instead of seeing him or her as a beggar. When you can see the wounds of the enemy soldiers, seeing the enemy, uh, instead of seeing the enemy, then you know that your heart and your mind have been affected by Calvary because seeing the wounds of Jesus Christ on the cross, seeing the flesh and seeing the blood, or, or, or go so far if you might as well, seeing the wounds in your own life, and, and, and I know this is incredibly unpopular today, but nothing makes you more Christ-like than when you are wounded. Nothing makes you more Christ-like than when you are oppressed and when you are afflicted. If you want to be Christ-like, you really want to be a Christian, you need to understand that nothing makes you more Christ-like than being wounded, oppressed, and afflicted. And we live in a society today that all they want to preach about is, is the blessings of the Lord. And the blessings of God are very real. And he said, I will open you up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings on you that you cannot contain. And those are very real. But if you really want to be like Jesus, you need to understand that affliction and oppression uh, and wounds come with that. Are you willing to go as a sheep before the shears is dumb and keep your mouth closed? Nothing makes you more Christ-like than when you turn the other cheek instead of raising your hand in defense and defiance. We want to scream power, and, and, and there's some times where God says it's time to fight. But nothing makes you more Christ-like than when you're willing to Turn the other cheek. The prophet Isaiah, he penned those dreadful, beautiful words. He's despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hid as it were our faces from him. He is despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. And so today... I want you to hear me tell you that seeing the wounds affects your heart. Seeing the wounds affects your mind. Seeing his wounds affects your spirit. Seeing the wounds causes you to rearrange your priorities. You see, there's a rearranging of our priorities that occurs when, when rip flesh and blood splashes across our vision and, 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 and we're brought to a renewed sense of sacrifice, a sacrifice that was made for you and made for me. Uh, I, I love the Lord and I'm thankful for his many blessings. He has blessed me with a wonderful wife and two wonderful children. He's blessed me with the home and, and transportation and clothes on my back and food on my table. And I'm so thankful for the many blessings of God and I want the blessings of God. Do not misunderstand me. 
I want the blessings of God. I want the Lord to open up windows of heaven and bless me like he blessed Job and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. I want him to bless me like he blessed Jabez, and I want him to keep me from evil. But I want you to understand something today. When you see the wounds that were made for you, it changes everything. And what that, what that Iraqi soldier was doing that day was fighting for his freedom. What that Navy corpsman saw was, were wounds. And when I see a soldier who is wounded in the battle, I cannot be unmoved. I cannot help it but to be Incredibly grateful. Grateful for the sacrifice of that person who willingly chose to go fight for my freedom. And the Roman cross was very real. The Roman cross was very real. It was, it was heavy and it was rugged. It was awful. The Roman cross was torturous and it was a sign of torture. And there's no doubt that Thousands upon thousands, history tells us, lined certain roads in certain areas. Historians tell us that most likely Joseph and Mary on their way to Bethlehem passed crosses of people who had been tortured and put to death. And those massive spikes, I don't know about you, but whenever I imagine them, I always see railroad spikes in my mind. Those massive spikes, they were very real. And those spikes left gaping holes in the hands of Jesus and, and they pierced his side and blood and water flowed and they disfigured his flesh and they, they beat him with that cat of nine tails. But none of his bro bones were broken as the prophet had said. And they pressed the crown of thorns down on Jesus' brow until blood trickled down his face. And I want you to hear me today that all this happened but Thomas did not believe that he was truly the Messiah. Thomas did not believe that he was truly the Messiah and that he had risen from the dead until Jesus said, reach, reach thither, reach hither thy finger. And behold my hands, Thomas. Reach hither thy hand and thrust it in my side. See the wounds. Touch the wounds. Jesus gave Thomas permission to touch his wounds. And Thomas said, I don't have to touch them. My mind is changed just by seeing them. I don't have to touch your wounds, Jesus. My mind is changed just by seeing the gaping hole in your side. My mind is changed by seeing the disfigurement of your back. My mind is changed by seeing your hands. See, Jesus did not see an American. He didn't see a white man when he walked up that hill of Golgotha. Jesus didn't see skin color when he climbed up there. He saw no money. He saw no prosperity. Jesus did not see your power or your fame. Jesus did not see a uniform on that battlefield. He didn't see male or female. He didn't see young or old. What Jesus saw was a wretched man that I am. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? O wretched man that I am. Only, only Jesus, only Jesus can do that. Only Jesus can change you. The U.S. Navy corpsman was the only hope for that Iraqi Republic, Republican guardsman. The U.S. Navy corpsman was the only hope for that enemy soldier, that, that man out there on the battlefield that had been shooting different directions. And, and, and I want you to understand that Jesus Christ is our only hope here on this battlefield. And whether you've seen the wounds in your life has been changed by, by seeing the wounds and realizing, oh, wretched man that I am. Or 
You need God to help you see the wounds of the, the men on our streets. If you need God to see, uh, help you see the wounds of the women who are in our, our health clinics. You need God to help you see the wounds of the people who are suffering from drugs and alcohol and pornography and tobacco. You need God to help you see the wounds of people who are suffering from divorce and oppression and, and, and affairs. You need God to help you see the wounds that, that are plaguing the individuals of our community. Oh, wretched man that I am. He didn't look across time and say, look, there's Darren Michael Williams wearing a suit. Got his hair combed. He had a bath today. He keeps his house clean. He eats normal food from a grocery store. No. Just as much as he saw me, he saw the filthy, smelly man on the street that's eating from a dumpster. I'm going to close with this illustration. When I was in my early 20s, a man came to my dad's church. And he came in a, a vehicle that barely made it there. It was messed up. And he came into our church disheveled, and he looked homeless. He acted homeless. And uh, my heart had compassion on this man. And I thought to myself, I was going to befriend him and, and help him. And his testimony shook me to my core, and I'll never forget it. I can tell you where we were standing when he told me. After multiple attempts to try to get to know him a little better, he finally opened up and he said, I'm doing the best I can do. He said, I'm a doctor. And I had my own practice. But my wife and four kids were in a car wreck the car exploded and they were all killed in the fire of the wreck. And he said, I have to live with that every day. He said, so what you see isn't a poor man who's homeless. What you see is a man who's wounded. What you see is a man who's hurt. What you see is a man who's broken. And he said, I make it one day at a time with the help of the Lord. 